Good morning. How are you? Fine. You excited today? Yes. Okay. Can I ask you something? Yes. Do you like to share what you ate in your lunch then today? Yes. Tando, did you bring lunch today? Yes. Now, if I'm going to tell you that Keenan didn't bring his lunch today, will you be willing to share your lunch with him? Yes. Okay. And how are you going to share it with him? Yes. You'll give him a piece. Oh, okay. How big is that piece going to be? How are you going to share it with him? <laughs> Equally. Oh, he's a good friend, eh? He's going to share his sandwich equally with him eh? today's lesson was about fractions and i was doing addition of fractions i start off today with introducing to them a pizza i asked them what did you eat what do you what do you, what do you eat normally on weekends and would you like to share your food that was just actually just to get them to talk to me in a way so that they can see basically fractions mean sharing breaking the whole into different equal parts now today i use the fraction blocks because it's colorful it's different shapes and so that the kids can see that it's not only pizza it's not only cake, cakes it's not only lemons it's or oranges that you can cut but there's other things also that you can cut now boys and girls I want you to show me in how many equal parts, in how many ways can you make one today? How many ways can we make one today? Using the, the hexagon, the rhombus, the trapezium, the equilateral triangle, actually bring in the idea of uh, shapes that we use in, in the outside world also in nature, different kind of shapes, different colors. If they can't add the shape, they can add a different color, one yellow plus one red, and then they can still get to an answer. I asked them to add the, the blocks, with the blocks first, and I was watching them while they were adding. They added the whole numbers first, and then they went to the fractional part. I guided them actually to put the fractional part in the shape of the hexagon, seeing that they can in be introduced to sixes, thirds, the many ways that you can dress up one. I want you to come and present in how many ways you can make wonderful one. So in your group, you are going to decide how you're going to do it. But I want you to see if you can do it with a song. Now in your group, Quickly get the cover closer and then you speak to your friends and see how we're going to do that. The rap song is like the kids, they so into rapping and, and I've decided let's take something that's known to them. Maybe that can be a song that they'll never forget. I'm going to ask this group to bring their blocks with them and come stand in front. Okay, let's see. Ready? And... Wherever they see fractions, they'll think of a hexagon, and I don't think they'll ever forget the names of those shapes, knowing that they were actually singing it, and every child likes to sing. Beautiful. Thank you, boys. Put it down. I'm going to give you an activity to do quickly, just to show to you what we're busy with. I handed out an activity to them where there was different figures actually, where some of them were shaded and some of them were not shaded because all the teachers don't have the friction blocks. So by doing the different figures with uh, shaded and not shaded, then the child can also see the partner fractions. If you look at figure one, how many equal parts do I have there? Four. I have four equal parts, but is there something different? in that figure one. What do you notice? Tando? One of the parts are colored. One of the parts are colored or shaded. Give me the fractional part that is not shaded. Tando? Three quarters. Three quarters. I love teaching from the concrete to the abstract because with the concrete, the child can see clearly 
see, touch, and feel the object. So it's easy for them to connect, actually, the moment they see the object, and when they do it in the abstract, and I hope that they'll understand that better. What is a mixed fraction? What is a mixed fraction? A mixed fraction is when you have your whole number and a fractional part that is not equal to one yet. Now add one and one third. One and add to your one and one six. Don't take it off. One and one six. Okay, what do you have now? Two and a half. Now, Tando have two and a half. Now, where's your two and a half, Nishai? Mm -hmm. There's your two and there's your half. That's two and a half. Then I went to the addition of the mixed numbers or mixed fractions where they add their whole numbers first and then they add the fractional part. Although there's more than one way to add actually, but I prefer today to add the whole numbers first, seeing that I can do it with the concrete first and then move to the abstract. What do we have now, Lishe? Five. Give it to, yes, three and five sixes. Okay, let's add two and one half plus one and two thirds. Now, when you were doing the addition with the blocks, what did you add first? Okay? And you first added the whole number. You first added your whole numbers. You added two plus one. What do you notice about your denominators? Yes, Yvonne? I can add them, but before I can add them, what must I do, Yvonne? I need to make my denominators the same. Now, let's say the multiples of 2 quickly. 2, two 4, four six, 8, ten. Okay, I will write them down. Multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Why did I do that? Let me uh, tell you. <clears throat> I need to see if there's a way that I can make my denominators the same. So I write my multiples down and now I will look if there's anyone there that's common or that's the same. When we add our fractions, our denominators need to be the same. If it's not the same, I need to make it the same. That's why it's important for them to do, know their timetables so that they can be able to do the multiples of their de different denominators. And at the end, we end up adding the, the, the fractions and we ended up with uh, improper fraction. And ag again, at a, a st earlier stage, we've done how to change um, uh, improper fraction to a mixed number and I just had to recap so that the child could write the answer in the simplest form. What I love about teaching maths is like the kids really enjoy it sometimes to work with the mind although it's a dif difficult subject but the way you present your lessons can really make a difference in any child's life. Mm -hmm.